So let's start at the beginning. You have this idea, Memorias Urbanas, urban memories. How did you get this idea, and then how did you begin to work with this idea of the memory of something that no longer exists, that once existed but does not exist anymore? Well, you know, I was uh, the typical sculpture looking for like uh, dialogues with my sculpture in the urban spaces, and uh, suddenly I had done uh, in 205, I, I had done a big installation in Madrid in the uh, white night, the uh, Noche en Blanco. The white nights, yes. And uh, the Nuit Blanche. Uh, and uh, suddenly uh, I, I, I got an offer from uh, the city hall of Bucharest to produce uh, the whole white night that they were going to start in, in Bucharest uh, in 2007. 2007. 2007. 2007. And then, uh, well, I, 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 I started to spend some time in Bucharest. I made a couple of uh, proposals uh, in my line of uh, like introducing flowers, or uh, I, and uh, they they weren't very enthusiastic. At one point, uh, one night, uh, coming back from a dinner, uh, happened that uh, the two uh, the two people in the car that were from the city hall turned the head not to see a building in the city, that is a, a big building that uh, Ceausescu uh, had uh, built in, in, that is called Casa Popoluloi, uh, surrounded by green grass, and, uh, and, and I asked, uh, what's cooking? And they said, well, pff, it's too much, uh, I, I, we cannot expl explain. So I, I woke up next day, and I started to walk around, and I said, something, something's wrong here. In, uh, I mean, uh, something, uh, uh, so I started to uh, make a, like a research in the archives and I discovered that the, in that uh, uh, point uh, there was a, a neighborhood, a full neighborhood called the Little Paris and that Ceausescu had destroyed it. So I immediately... You mean the dictator of the Romania? The dictator yeah. with a big earthquake uh, in, uh, in 1986, something like that. And he destroyed this whole area? He destroyed the whole area, built his... Uh, 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 his dream, mm -hmm. which was at the end the nightmare of uh, everyone. Mm. So uh, I started to propose the re uh, rebuilding three corners of this neighborhood to this uh, uh, the city hall. They, they immediately bought the idea, and I started to work in a, in a, um, uh, it was like, uh, you know, in Rome, Cinecita, the place where they produce the, the movies. The movies. Yeah. There, there was uh, something like that in Bucharest, so I, 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 I had the, the opportunity. The movie sets? Yeah. Okay. Oh my God. Yeah. And I had the opportunity to collaborate with them, and so I, I developed uh, uh, like uh, my, my own way to illuminate the pieces by night and so. And then uh, the project struggled at one point because the, the government changed it. But I got uh, my um, I got my own uh, language and I got my uh, my own uh, I, I I immediately wrote uh, like my manifest after that. This is two thousand seven. Yeah, this okay. is two thousand. So now, does it still exist? Is this project still there? Or they uh, there's a, a full of sketches. Mm -hmm. There is a full of uh, invoices that haven't <laughs> been paid. <laughs> uh, and uh, not much more. Uh, some some fragments of the pieces are still in this uh, Chinechita, and, but was never shown so in, in the in the streets. But uh, I I became that was 2007 2008. I became an offer from the uh, Senate uh, Berlin Senate. So as, as a result of this, somebody, what, a politician? As a result of uh, learning Bucharest. that I was developing this uh, sort of recovery. The people in Berlin, they love this sort of recovery. They call it a Denkmal. Yes. There's yes. a full monument. language. Yes, the Denkmal, but in English it means more than a monument. It means to think about something, to yeah, reflect because, on something. Yeah, they are, it's very conceptual. I mean, uh, well, but yes, yeah, the idea is a concept, but then you actually make a real installation or you change the landscape. So that's far more than a concept. So that's why, uh, you know, it's very difficult finally to realize these, these great urban projects. This is very difficult. 
Uh, it's difficult to do it uh, all by once, at once. But uh, you know, I'm preparing a new show, uh, and I'm gonna call it uh, Two Hands, Six Hours Per Day, something like that. Because I think that uh, obviously you have, you are, you're, we're all conceptual artists, and we all uh, look for uh, like uh, uh, something that has to be done some, some, somehow. But uh, then you have your arms, and then you have your your time, and you have uh, like uh, the whole. Here I work the whole morning from eight to three. Mm -hmm. So and then I, I I go back to drawings and so. But uh, I, I mean, to if you have an idea of something that has to be recovered of any history, or something uh, you and you have uh, your uh, skills. To develop, mm -hmm. somehow you, you you come to. Uh, I mean, you if you go for it, you you develop the skills. Well, I know. I mean, I have watched uh, your work develop over some time, and it becomes more complicated and more. And the fact that you do everything by hand, which is a bit crazy, uh, it, but it also it shows uh, in in terms of the work is not industrially fabricated. You feel that a human hand made this, and that that's part of the content, really. And I think intentional on your part. You could send this out to a factory, but well, you don't. Well, it couldn't be otherwise if you think that uh, what I, uh, I am uh, intending is to draw in the air. So you, you, can, you, can, you can do many activities you can tell somebody to do for you, but uh, tell somebody to draw for you. I mean, it's nonsense. Yes, it is the hand of the artist. But uh, where did you, okay, now this concept of drawing in air, it, it begins really, uh, I guess with Picasso. Uh, I don't know who first talks about it. Who speaks about drawing in air? Mm, I oh, think it's a sculptural that, concept. Well, uh, uh, drawing in the air is a result of, uh, first that uh, my, my background is a, uh, I am a drawing man. I am a, a draftsman. You are a draftsman. draftsman. Yeah. Uh, for yeah. long years before uh, in the school and uh, uh, from very young. And second, I am uh, I am in love with interacting with the street. So wh wh when I first thought on uh, taking a resource that is from uh, public, from everyone, mm -hmm. I, I, I I felt very respectful not to uh, to take the minimum amount of space and views. So mm -hmm. lines are that. I mean, you, you just try to put as much as possible with the minimum amount of uh, resources. Uh, so uh, uh, that's uh, the idea of drawing in the air came to me uh, very quickly when I when I thought on recovering buildings of, of recovering stories uh, somehow. So really, all the works that you do, which are these installations in cities, or they are dreamed of, I mean, they are projects that the end product is supposed to be an installation in a public space in a city. But it's based on an investigation of history. So why are you so interested in history when we live in a time where history is annihilated? We're here just for a moment, it's over. I am interested in cities. I have uh, spent a lot of time in different cities and uh, always had, uh, I, I, I always love to walk around and, and watch the buildings. In Paris, when I, uh, when I, uh, when I did study in Paris and, and when, when I made any trip to, to any place, I had to walk around and, and like establish a relationship with the buildings. When you establish a relationship with the buildings, you, you Afterwards, you want to know more and more. So, so uh, all sort of books that tell you more and and, and, and help you uh, having uh, like uh, more inputs on what you are uh, looking at. Uh, I I love them. And then history. I I think that uh, history is very attractive for anyone that uh, comes into it. I mean, you you. Just one more and more and more. It's like a drug. Well, I'm an historian, so you are an historian. <laughs> so you 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 probably taste the you 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 
you feel like me that it's like a drug, you have to stop it at one point. I mean, well, you can keep investigating, investigating, and go back, back, back. But the thing is, it's a kind of uh, a counter position to take today when really media def it de denies history. It's only the immediate. I mean, in other words, nobody cares about the past. So to be so involved with a past, and not only that, the past that has disappeared, which you try mm -hmm. to invoke the memory of that. Yeah, okay. Uh, it seems a very odd thing to do. Yeah, but you are you are encouraging, uh, encouraging me, Barbara. I am encouraging you. You are encouraging yeah, me because, because what's, the role, what's the role of, a, of an artist? To do what is not done. I mean, you have plenty of yeah. people doing what is uh, like uh, uh, evident or so. I mean, my, my, my obsession is to do things that haven't been done and trying to move always uh, in the borderline, trying to extend uh, uh, and to, to look for uh, uh, what, uh, what is not uh, like politically uh, correct. correct or uh, uh, what the mass is looking at. Uh, to, but uh, I would, I, it wouldn't be uh, exact if I told you that uh, I look just to, to break that because I also want to feel comfortable to, uh, and to feel that uh, the field is really uh, what, I, uh, what I want to do mm. because this is a lifetime uh, task, you know? Yes, yes. But you are encouraging me, yes. I mean, the people well, because I see progress. I see that, you know, uh, you keep working and you keep making up new things and new projects. But let's go back to the original big, big project, which is in Berlin. So somebody came to you, polit politician, I guess, from Berlin, and said, what? I want you to do what? No, 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 no. Uh, in Berlin, they are very open. They just offer uh, like um, assets. Mm -hmm. They offer you to occupy the workshop some help in terms of uh, personnel and technical support mm -hmm. and then they know what you are looking for but they don't tell you, you you have to look in that direction more than the other so i i i suddenly this story of these uh, bohemian uh, immigrants that uh, uh, had their center uh, disappear this building it came to me. Okay, so let's start the story of um, the whole project in Berlin. Okay, so what is the project in Berlin called? How did you start it? Explain it to me, the whole thing. The project in Berlin, I, pro I, 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 I did a proposal to the city hall, uh, supported by, at one point, by some foundations, some uh, uh, collections of art, to uh, temporarily recover a building that had been uh, the center for a community of Bohemian people. Bohemian mean Czech. Czech people. Yes. That in the uh, 18th century had to leave uh, their country uh, for uh, tolerance questions. Mm -hmm. Okay? So uh, I found this. You mean story. religious tolerance? But they religious had, they tolerance. They had a different religion because I don't. Yes. Really know. Oh, tell they me. They had a, in Bohemia a, the religion at one point was uh, Catholic, and this pe these people they were Protestant people, uh -huh. uh, original Protestants, and so. What happened there is that uh, I was in Berlin trying to develop uh, something really crazy trying to develop a, 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 an artistic, uh, uh, an art career, which is already as, as difficult as uh, the, the religious uh, thing. I mean, more or less, more or right. less the same thing. Yes. I mean, at one point, the, this stupid uh, thing becomes your religion. And uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm talking about art now. Mm -hmm. So I had my own religion, I had to develop it, and uh, the religion was based in this uh, crazy plan. And I identify myself with these immigrants that came in the, in the 18th century. So I, I, I thought that Berlin was the place. So they thought too, and Berlin was the place. 
Well, I'm impressed that you speak German. You're the only Spaniard I have ever met who speaks well, German. Well, there are some. <laughs> there, are, there are even many Spaniards that Sanio speak Edbasato. better, better German than... No, because I don't have any, you know, the, the, my you secret... You speak very good. You speak very good German. I, I, have, I, don't, I don't do any, any uh, grammar... Uh, I, don't, I don't respect any grammar rule, but I speak in text. <laughs> because you, I mean, you don't need any grammar because Germans are very, very, inter very, very intelligent. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah, I know you're a big fan. Well, because my professors were German, but... Um, so, okay. So, you developed this plan for the Bohemian Church. Mm -hmm. And tell me what you find and what you do and how it goes and where we are now with this project. Well, this story uh, starts to grow and grow. At one point, the parliament of, I mean, after we build this, because it was uh, like uh, an adventure, uh, I received like a message that uh, lots of associations want the peace to stay forever. If I agreed that the peace could stay forever, uh, I, I very quickly uh, made my uh, the uh, idea is that, uh, yes, it's uh, much better than trying to sell it by pieces, which was the original plan. Yeah. Uh, and then um, uh, it's a long process because Berlin is uh, bureaucratically very... Uh, uh well, all great cities are bureaucracies. So yeah, to begin to of. interact with a great city, a capital, yeah. I mean, it's already, uh, you know, Christo did it, Oldenburg did it, but it's extraordinarily complex. I mean, because... Uh, yeah. You are you are involved on many levels. I mean, you have your artistic concept. You are dealing with levels of of bureaucracies, of political interests. Of you know. I am dealing with people that deals with other people that deals with other people. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's a long chain of yeah, heroes. I know. A long chain of particular heroes that have uh, uh, devoted their activity over the years to establish this as their dream because it's not anymore my dream it's their dream and uh, they let finally to make the story short uh, to the same person that saved Christo which is with the Reichstag because Christo wanted to wrap yeah, the Reichstag exactly and then it took I don't know 20 years or something more it took to 20 years at, until the moment when a lawyer that is called Mr. Moma because he brought uh, the MoMA Museum to Berlin. And his name is uh, Peter Rawe. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter Rawe uh, took care of that with his uh, big uh, lawyer uh, company. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like uh, 700 lawyers uh, specialized in art. And um, uh, finally they submitted to the, to the Reichstag and they approved it. Okay, so at one point, uh, I was having such a, a chaos in, in I, I mean, uh, uh, that uh, all of the news were talking about the controversial sculpture that no one knew if it had to stay or if it could stay. Or oh, yeah. Uh, it, it, but at least, you know, that uh, moment, at least the public debate, you make people aware that there is something like art, because sure, for the most part, I, the people... I, I, I couldn't sleep, I, I, you know, I, I, I mean, the people was uh, interested, but uh, I was extremely... Uh, I mean, this is a violent thing. So, uh, this is uh, operating in the streets, and uh, what you see here, uh, the way I produce it with the hands and everything, requires a lot of energy and requires, uh, it's like a sort of... Exorcism. Sort of. <laughs> so, uh, when I, but there is a limit. I mean, there is a point when you uh, think that uh, the war is overpassing you, or it's out of control. And at that moment when things were out of control in the media, they appeared this uh, Peter Raue, Peter, actually, because mm -hmm. he's a German, and offered me to work uh, for the project uh, Pro Bona, mm -hmm. which means uh, without any... Um, Getting paid, yeah. So it means he believed in the project, because this is not a person who just does anything. So he must have thought it was a great project. Well, I was, I was absolutely uh, honored by uh, the news. Then we started, because uh, his, 
he's the last one, but he's uh, th there were already like uh, 20 uh, previous heroes, mm -hmm. the personal people that I, I have actually written a book about that, and so, uh, because I would never be able to to correspond to such um, generous. Well, but I mean, in the past, you know, the artist had behind him like the Pope or somebody, but the contemporary artist, you have to have, if you're thinking very big, you have to have many people involved and many people who believe in the project. So tell me where is the Bohemian Church project now in Berlin? Well, uh, it's uh, already established uh, in all levels. We have to uh, make um, some adjustments in the piece because it has to host 600 people simultaneously every day. It's like a very, uh, it's a very touristical place, and uh, so the bases instead of these uh, provisional cubes have to be enlarged, and, and, and it, it reproduces exactly. The, oh, the columns shape of the original church. Of the original uh, fundament. Yeah. The, um, because didn't you find that there, the floor plan was still there? The church was destroyed. The floor but, plan was there. Yes, which is unique. And it's a yeah. It's a lucky strike. Yeah, that doesn't ever happen. No. It, it, yeah, it's a magic thing. Uh, that 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 particular project. No, and it was also ridiculous. I mean, how <laughs> it happened because the way I found it is I was driving my brother's uh, car. And my brother is very lazy. He never, <laughs> he never, uh, you know, my, my brother, uh, he, he lives in Berlin, but he, he oh, lives... Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. He came with me at the beginning. N not anymore, but he, he used to spend a lot of time with me. And he had a, a car equipped with the summer, uh, the summer, uh, how you call the... Uh, the round thing that you uh, put in the, in the car. The oh, yeah, okay, uh, in, in the back. The wheels. Know? Oh, the wheels, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. The summer wheels, so I couldn't drive in the, in the main cities because when, when I started to, to stop the car, oh, made yeah. like 100, 200 meters. You're saying because that they're, they're with all of the in, snow and everything. Yeah, yeah there's so snow tires, there's snow tires and then there are regular yeah. tires. So in Berlin, it snows, so you have to put in the winter, you have to put the snow tires on. He yeah. didn't. Uh -huh. He didn't put any snow tires, so I had to uh, drive through secondary uh, streets. streets. Oh, because you couldn't go down. And so I highways. found this announcement of, of this building in, in one of those nights in secondary streets with my brother's car. And then I had to wait one month to discover the mosaic that was underneath. The, but you saw it immediately or not? No. Oh, just so you went back and then I, you realized. Th there was a picture in. in I, I came to. I came home. I watched in, in Google. Mm -hmm. I saw uh, some pictures from the air in Google, but you never know how. Uh, I mean, Berlin was changing so quickly mm -hmm. that uh, I couldn't tell for sure that this was uh, the situation at that moment because uh, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, and all of that neighborhood from that moment on uh, has been a completely. Transform it. Well, Berlin is in constant sort of urban renewal, and, and it's you know it's, it's it's probably the most interesting city in the West uh, because of that. Mm -hmm. Because it, it, it when they put the two Germanys back together, there was so much that could be done, so much of that was happening, mm -hmm. and now you know now people are beginning to make money out of it. So well, it's a, a bit the moment that we are going to live in Havana now. Yes. I mean, Havana is the new Berlin. That's right. I, I love that sort of I energy. totally agree with you 100%. I spent last Christmas, New Year's in Havana, and it was fantastic. One reason being, Berlin at a certain point, the p people felt the future is better than the present. And that's what they think in Havana now. Mm -hmm. They thought that in Spain in the 80s, but that's over. Yeah, that's <laughs> a, but you are but right. No, the future. You feel the, future, the future will be better than the present. And it's normally tied to the concept we have lots of things to learn, which is also very interesting. I mean, oh, oh Cuba is it's a, I mean, it's a creative explosion, but uh, they, they have to go slow. They, they are going to absorb all of the things that, uh, and, and to give so much. Because it's really problematic, though, because what they don't want is, I mean, look, so many years they lived 
with terrible privations in order not to be taken over by the United States. What, they're now going to let Donald Trump build uh, hotels on the beaches? No. So they have to be very resistant because it's powerful economic mm -hmm. interests who just want to gobble them up. Mm -hmm. So this is a real problem, how to keep them out. Same as in Berlin, but they, they will have this sort of energy. Like that the future, yeah, I agree with you. I completely agree That with the you. best is yet to come. Yeah. And, and I love to be in places that have this feeling because otherwise it's uh, like there's nothing to do. Well, I like uh, what you told me. It's going to be the motto around the base of this uh, urban memory of the Bohemian Church in Berlin. And you said it's going to say in English, a hope. What did you tell me? Yeah. The sentence is a uh, backlap Havel sentence. Never hope against hope. And I guess that it summarizes what we all believe in terms of art, in terms of immigration, which is lo always looking for uh, mm. something that you... Well, it's a, be it's a beautiful metaphor that the church of the Czech people who had to move to Germany, uh, that this, you know, there's constant movement. And now we are confronted by the fact that people are at moving around at, at, at a tremendous rate and displacing things and changing things. And uh, it's a great opportunity. Well, it's a big moment of Europe to face the phenomena. Uh, we are uh, we are facing a problem that we don't really know how to. No, this is this is true. This completely. I mean, the United States is a country that was born out of immigration, but even you know the Americans who now uh, don't know how to deal with it. I mean, because people are afraid. They're basically, you know, they're scared. They're scared of the new, they're scared of the foreign, they're scared of all kinds of things, you know. You need to take care of many things. Yeah, but I, I mean, uh, the idea that this is a monument for hope, and then you told me that uh, now in the center there's going to be something that you can sort of throw money like in, uh, you know, to mm -hmm. make a wish, to hope. Well, uh, to insert money. I mm -hmm. mean, we yeah. don't want the people to throw yeah, right. it okay. because okay. otherwise... Right. Yeah. <laughs> More control. Okay. Put the money in. And I then mean, it's going to be a big explosion. The money is something that, uh, as you know, is, uh, is also important in this uh, sort of... Uh, I mean, we're not in the, in the era of the mega projects mm -hmm. of thousands of millions that... Uh, so uh, everything is managed by... Um, foundation that uh, will take this money to make the installation uh, sustainable and uh, uh, so it's a uh, the question is that it's very interactive you will be able to insert a, mo uh, a coin mm -hmm. and then the installation will suddenly light on turn turn on all, all of the lights for a minute mm -hmm. so and probably with time we will also be able to uh, like uh, have a webcam and you you will you will be able to check that from your uh, laptop and so when do you think it will be finished and open to the public or what's the state of it now we have two stages first stage is in December 10 days in the streets with all of the uh, concrete and so and then the technological stage, uh, which has another budget also from the city hall, is for, uh, I think, March. So wait, so the first stage, what will happen? Uh, in 10 days. In yeah. 10 days is what 10 happens? days. What happens? What happens is that uh, we, uh, uh, we uh, build a new, uh, a, a new structure in, in concrete mm -hmm. to host all of the visitors in a different way they could sit and, and lay uh -huh. down and mm -hmm. everything on mm -hmm. because it have you will, designed that yet yes it will reproduce exactly the former walls the the original walls uh -huh. of the church uh -huh. now, now i'm interested in uh the fact that you use these led lights mm -hmm. and so what is your attitude as an artist toward technology well, uh, my attitude is that uh, the more you experiment, the more uh, you complete your process. I mean, you, I, I try to do what hasn't been done in the way that hasn't been done. So you have, like, a, a, it's, a, a, it's a wrong process. You, 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 you start uh, uh, thinking on something that can be uh, new, and then you have uh, to look at the newest way to do it uh, 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 and, and by doing that you become new ideas of what hasn't been done so it's like a retroactive uh, mm. process 
now I was uh, I am I am uh, you saw me tired at the beginning because I had these three days non sleep for loading all of these uh, pieces that go to my animal and at the one point uh, my Gary came and he saw the process that I was doing with this velvet uh, stuff which I, I actually took the idea from the opera from the Berlin Opera they, they spread velvet in the in the furniture and so, so um, but why don't know, I haven't seen the pieces you haven't part. seen so it what, is, what, are, what did you do? I, I, I do a, like it's a, a multi-shape uh, process but at the end you will have like the touch of, of velvet on, 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 on all of the steel and wood and everything it's unbelievable <laughs> and, the, and the aspect too so, so how did you get that idea uh, well uh, I, 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 I wanted to put uh, like the same material to uh, to, to make uh, a unity mm -hmm. of different materials uh, uh, like uh, I was thinking on this project process in, in, in France or on this process in Paris mm -hmm. that reproduces different uh, elements from the garden mm -hmm. and I wanted to have the same material for the base and for the and for the lines in the air and all together to have a unity so I was thinking first on putting some uh, pay, uh, some some sort of uh, a finish like a car, like this, uh, mm -hmm. the, the stuff that uh, Enamel, yeah. many people do. Mm -hmm. And then I suddenly, uh, uh, I, I thought, why? Uh, I'm, I'm not very related with this sort of pop, mm -hmm. but uh, maybe if I put uh, an element, because I normally use elements, mm -hmm. which is in this case the fabric, mm -hmm. which is another element, and actually the velvet is a fabric. Mm -hmm. Uh, I will keep my 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 uh, language. I will keep my. But it seems to me. I mean, for example, you see this piece uh, behind you, which has the light, mm -hmm. the lines of the light. But then it has the steel and mm -hmm. the wood. But it seems to me that the actual material properties of the wood and the steel are are important. Are very so, important. So, but if you cover it all with velvet, then there's no longer a distinction. Well, that is very important for that piece. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do that to that piece. I wouldn't do that to this other piece of this uh, roof. Mm -hmm. But so, there are. So, what did you do it to the balcony? Is that probably? You don't know yet. Uh, it's one of the pieces that admit this sort of treatment perfectly. And I was actually thinking on doing it to the balcony, mm -hmm. but uh, I didn't. I I, I did it to. Uh, some vases of the Tuileries. Ah, yeah? Do yeah. you have some images? So no, I don't, because I did work by night with the people that came loaded in the morning, and then I have to finish that in Miami. Wow. Yeah, so uh, I, I don't have any images, but, but I tell you, I mean, uh, you know, uh, you know Alvaro, my Spanish guy? Yeah, yeah. He told me, I definitely want this. I, I, uh, no, I think Alvaro has a very good eye. He yeah. has a very good eye. A, yeah. yeah. So, I, but here's what I would like you to do. Just tell me the um, major themes, because you know you take a project and you have an idea about it. You do the research for it, then you make an installation, then you make pieces. So after Berlin, what is the the next project? Well, you know very well the next project because you propose it to <laughs> me. Venice. <And> you propose <laughs> the memories of the garden. <laughs> you you propose it to me. This. Uh, 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 it was absolutely epic. <laughs> it was epic. <laughs> uh, yes. Crazy, interesting, uh, genuine, and uh, uh, well, uh, you know it very well. At the end, we did uh, uh, recover the past of this uh, unbelievable garden in the middle of it Venice. Was a, it was uh, belonged to an artist friend of mine named Lisa Luther Hess who is actually Viennese, but she lives, it's always lived in Venice. And she has a garden, an interior garden, and it's the, one of the very few, you know, in Venice, which is all water, to have this interior garden, and it's from the 16th century, but it's probably the oldest garden. So then we did this, in, you know, investigation, what was really there. And, and what we found, <laughs> we found ended by driving a, a little bit crazy. And it, we found it, it was a graveyard. I mean, it, the <laughs> ideas. You remember when Lisa Lotte saw, first saw the drawings and she was so happy. And she, uh, oh my God, you did all of this effort. It's fantastic and barbarous. She's a genius. And then at one point, I think that, uh, well, uh, for the people, let's say that it was a cemetery. 
so at one point a cemetery yeah well, experimented. That's we after, after yeah after we did all the research and i said oh my god Juan, this was originally it was a cemetery so we have to have ghosts and fortunately lisa lota who many books were written about her and she was very involved with three people whose uh, the spirit was in the garden or really the person was in, in the garden so first of all it was fortuni uh, the great dress designer painter spanish who lived in venice she saved the Fortuny dress works and the fabrics, and in fact, her collection, a lot of it is in Madrid, in the Museo del Traje. And, uh, but she saved that whole process of how Fortuny made these uh, materials, which is, you know, very complex, and also about craftsmanship. Then we found out that Modigliani had used that studio. And then we found out that she saved the archives of Ezra Pound who had been in the garden. Many times. Many times. And even pictures and so. But the, the point, I mean, I, I am very happy about... Uh, and then you picked phrases from these people in their language, and you made the pieces, which were kind of cenotaphs, but also, you know, their thinking was still alive, so that uh, each person had a different phrase that summed up, you know, their, their contribution. Yeah, but some, somehow I admit that it was very related with death. Well, it was. It was. And I can understand this a lot, that at one point, one day, she started to feel a little bit uh, worse than the other, and then <laughs> she started to get so <laughs> nervous, thinking that I was I was taking <laughs> her like... Uh, the ghost. Yeah, the ghost, and yeah. that death was uh, the, uh, knocking her door. <laughs> with my work well because we were in italy and everybody's very superstitious in italy i am very superstitious and uh, but, but this was during the venice biennale so everybody came and uh it was you know very impressive people were very impressed yeah uh, friends of mine from america came um the editor of sculpture magazine and various friends and they were very very uh it was it was great i mean it was like uh, this apparition it was you know like this this kind of uh, fantasy thing that happens. And also, I think it's uh, for me uh, a big, a, a big success because working with you was already very important, uh, and Venice was very important. Everything was like uh, top. But it was interesting. But it, it was also, you know, stimulating, interesting, and a challenge. Mm -hmm. Big challenge, physical big challenge. challenge to bring this stuff. I, how did you get there? Did, I remember, didn't you come in a truck with all this stuff? It was uh, crazy. Yeah, and well, that is the easiest part. But you know <laughs> that in Venice you have to move everything with with, yeah. with boats, yeah. And, yeah. and so you have to wait that that uh, I mean the boat can can go all uh, 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 and and you risk of losing uh, all your stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes you cannot even uh, come in because uh, it fluctuates. Especially so that summer, it was terrible. It was that summer awful. was Aqualina terrible. Was the crazy. weather was awful. like yeah. awful. Yeah. So you, why do you like such big challenges? Why don't you do some nice little thing? Uh, because <laughs> otherwise I would, like uh, any other Spaniard, I would go to the Ministry of, uh, I don't know, to the Ministry of Agriculture <laughs> and get uh, like... Uh, long uh, a lifelong uh, job mm -hmm. and focus on i don't know my la bureaucracy <laughs> uh, yeah and, and have some hobbies which i which i don't have i mean otherwise mm -hmm. i don't I, I, you don't choose i mean this is if you no, like adventure you don't, no, you don't I, I i i like art i love art and so but i couldn't do art without adventure i couldn't could you no no, no. Some people, I don't know why they need adventure, but yes, I think it's true. It has to be adventure, discovery, um, yeah, otherwise it's, it's, it's boring. Um, but okay, so then Venice and then the next project I think you did was London and then you did Tuileries. Mm -hmm. So tell me about those projects. Uh, many projects uh, start to, to start to move simultaneously like uh, well you are you you talked about Cristo and it's a little bit the the same model I mean you you have like uh, different ideas in different places mm -hmm. which are handled by different people mm -hmm. and you follow a little bit like the water you follow the fastest uh, uh, way mm -hmm. the fastest the wave that's going yeah and so what is going right now in terms of a project and right now in terms of the fastest uh, and the um, yeah you launch the boats and you see which one is going to get there the one is uh, the one that keeps my uh, day uh, absolutely 
uh, full and uh, impossible is uh, uh, this Havana a balcony in, in Miami, which uh, we are going to present the 4th of December, no? mm -hmm. uh, Well, I'm very excited about that because I'm very excited about Cuba because I was there last Christmas, New Year's, and in some really remote, crazy place, Piñar del Rio, it's nowhere, and there was a television set, uh, and it came on, and there was Obama, and there was Raul Castro, and they say, now we are opening diplomatic relations. Mm -hmm. Well, for many people in the United States, I mean, many people like me, I mean, I was always in favor of the Cuban people, and this was a terrible, terrible situation, and basically, uh, the fault of the United States. I don't think there's any other way to look at it. We pushed them into the corner. What could they do? Only the Russians would protect them. But then the Cubans said to me when I was there, the terrible poverty, uh, which they called the special period, uh, was when the Russians left. You know, the fall of the Berlin Wall, no more communists, and the Russians left them, and they didn't know how to do anything anymore. And they said, we had to learn how to do everything again. And so now they have relaunched agriculture. They've got, but of course, what they have there, which you don't have anyplace else, you have 99.5% literacy. They can all read and write. Where else can you say that in the world? Certainly not in the United States. And I don't think in Spain either. That everyone is literate and everyone has health care. Where else can you say this? Yeah, that, that puts them in the position to be the leading place for the intellectual life in. in the continent. Well, that's it. Uh, they have an incredible educational well, system. But, but same as it happened in Berlin. We come to the yes, same point. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it, 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 it's a very different because well, of... But Berlin does not have Miami facing them. No, it's... <laughs> you know, Berlin, it's very insular. It's in the middle of a big country. Mm -hmm. And it's a very... And yeah, you are right. A wealthy country. No, the dynamism is there. The creativity is there. And the most exciting thing is in the United States, the art schools have fallen apart. So you have these master of fine arts programs, they teach nothing but the conceptual art, because it's ridiculous. In Cuba, you still have the Academy of Dance, you have the, the art academies, the architecture academy. You have intact an educational mm -hmm. system that supports the arts in terms of teaching skills and craft. We don't have that anymore. So the, the question is, can yeah, this right. tiny little island, this fragile place, how can they maintain what they managed to create and to keep? Well, think about we, Donald Trump. Uh, at one point, we, you need to you need to just uh, live life. I, uh, you could say the same. I mean, uh, uh, I have uh, some novels about the times of uh, Abba Gardner here in Madrid, oh, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And with these people around that they didn't have any teeth and they, they just played like the, the, <laughs> the guitar, guitar and yeah, so, right. and they yeah. she uh, uh, gave a coin and so. And, and probably many people in those times would have said, oh my God, we need to keep it, the spirit, this spirit is... But oh no, no, I don't think uh, that at all. I don't, I don't think that at all, but I think if you, I mean, I came to Spain when I was very, very young, and so I lived here in Poste Franco, and believe me, that was it. They were just beggars and dirt and terrible, and you think this country is no hope. Then you have La Movida, Franco dies, you have the uh, restitution of democracy, and everybody's happy, and the European Union gives Spain all the money, and the politicians steal it and run away. Mm -hmm. So everybody's very happy here for about 20 years, and now look at it. Yeah, but you, uh, who knows? I mean, who is going to colonize who? I mean, ah, at the end, at the end, very important. Uh, at the end, you don't know. You don't know it's exactly uh, who who is the owner of Berlin now. Uh, uh, the same multinational who is the owner of everything. <laughs> uh, but it doesn't Seems. have any. But it doesn't have any owner at the end. I mean, uh, yeah, in the end, it does. In the in the end, it's a it's a global. Uh, Oligarchy. It's a, economics is a pyramid, as it was in during Egyptian times. But I didn't. I didn't have to deal with any of those, and I did a big project. And uh, so. Uh, well, I think probably Germany is a more democratic country, one of the most democratic countries. So uh, that means yeah. that uh, there is a big field of freedom at one point, and and, uh, uh, and things that probably are not so easy to control. Because I mean, think on this. 70% of the houses of Berlin were sold to foreigners. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I know some of them, like, they are not coordinated, they don't have a boss, they don't have a chief. They just act 
for their own private interests and so on. At the end, you cannot control such a process. You go on the streets and it's a full new city of young people. Mm. Probably this phenomenon will happen in Nevada. Uh, it will be full of uh, young people. I want to contribute by linking the feelings, the feelings, which are important things in this story. I mean, the, the rich thing is how the people in Miami missed Havana. That is interesting. Okay, oh, that, yes. Uh, uh, let's, so let's talk about the balcony. The, uh, this is, this is uh, my cat. This is the first model. It's a very basic yeah. one. So you were inspired. <laughs> But were you inspired by the fact that at this moment that uh, it's opening up that the and United States and, and no Europe? at all no, 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 tell, no. Me, tell me so this is the balcony and what yeah is well I'm inspired because I when I when I when I have been in Havana and I have been a few times mm -hmm. uh, the first times without knowing anything that I would do any pro any any project or anything mm -hmm. and not even thinking it out I fell in love with the way they live uh, the balcony as a, mm -hmm. as a, as a it's, it's a social, a social yeah, club. The the social social club. Yeah, the social club. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the other one that makes like the But what's nails, nice is it's the whole family. The, eh? it's, no, it's, a whole it's the fam whole family. It's the grandma and the, it's a, a very nice thing about Cuba is they respect and the way they treat the old people and the young people. Mm -hmm. It's, it's e everybody is included. You don't mm -hmm. find that because now in the West, Everything is by generation, and uh, you don't have this feeling anymore. So yeah, these balconies. Yeah, the balcony is like the social club. The social uh, media, yeah. uh, where everything happens and uh, puts in common, like uh, all the buildings. Everyone knows everything. Actually, with the limitations that they have in terms of uh, internet and so, the balcony is, 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 is nowadays is like Cuba internet somehow. Yeah, yeah. Except they also have internet. <laughs> yeah, well, it's slow, more and more. Well, this is you know going to be interesting. What happens? Um, they have it. They have it. But uh, when social media takes over real social interaction, will that happen in Cuba? Mm -hmm. No, I don't think so because it's a Latin place. I mean, for example, in Spain, everybody's into their iPhone, but they still talk. And it's a Latin place. But they still talk. Whereas in well, some people uh, have always been talking. Probably the people that they don't talk, uh, they never talked. Uh, I mean, <laughs> the, the, there is a big hidden society that now is more visible, but uh, always w was always there, uh, doing something. Of the people you don't communicate, <laughs> <laughs> or you don't, you never get you to don't know. know that they're there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but okay, let's put. Uh, the accent of what we can do, which is to make, uh, uh, to, uh, to, to take like uh, the feeling of facing one the other, Cuba and Miami, uh, two places that are uh, not understandable, one, one without the other in the last... That's absolutely uh, true, absolutely uh, uh, true. So you want to put this on the uh, idea is to put it on the beach in Miami that, that it faces Havana, and then already on the Malecon, which is uh, the beachfront in La Habana, you have all these buildings with the balconies, and the people exactly are Exactly one of the balconies that yeah. is uh, the Havana balcony uh, facing Havana from Miami, but I would also love to do a Miami balcony, because Miami has also oh, it's sort of interesting. Uh, yeah, in, interesting. in Havana facing Miami. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, I'm also fascinated by the architecture in Miami. I think that people... Oh, yeah. People is not fair with Miami. Miami is much more than uh, people think. Oh, well, in architectural historians now. I mean, because uh, in Miami is also a city of the 30s and 40s mm -hmm. because it was a resort, and so you have this strange neo deco kind of American streamlined modernism, which it's more appreciated in the United States. I mean, it is a, a very secondary style, but mm -hmm. it's, it's its own thing. It's, it's a, a certain kind of. Uh, of architecture. It's attractive, if it's uh, genuine, it's uh, oh has yeah, a lot it's, of flavor. It's, it's authentic, it's authentic. It comes out of, uh, well, the climate, for one thing. And then you have the bright colors. And the, yeah, Miami was always a different kind of place. And yeah, and Miami is a, look, Miami is a city that was reborn very much because of the invasion of uh, the Cubans. Absolutely. Uh, and it's a city that, well, I always, you know, I say Miami, it's, it's Havana and North. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. uh, Amanda, it's Miami South. I mean, it's really... So you it's agree that oh, it's... Completely. Uh, oh, completely. The problem is how this bridge will be made and by whom and for what reason. That's the problem.
Yeah, but that, what's adventure if it hasn't uh, a big uh, percentage of uh, things oh, that can uh, that oh, are completely I just uncertain? Yeah, it's just that there are many things uh, that I think are better. Yeah, you know the dangers. Yeah, I do know. I do know because I mean I was born in the United States, so I do know. Um, but why don't okay before we sit down because I think it's a good idea to go over there. Um, I I think. Why don't you tell me about the Tuileries? First of all, the London bridges and okay. the Tuileries, because you're dealing with the images of big cities. Yes. So. Well, I'm uh, yes, I am very interested in two stories in those two cities from years ago too. Well, say the cities because otherwise it doesn't cut. Yeah. So you were the interested in London. The cities are London. Mm -hmm. When I uh, studied very deeply the. Uh, all London Bridge, which is a bridge that uh, disappeared at, at one point and they moved it to the new London Bridge, which is tied up, so the space is empty. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are talking about a big portion of the uh, British history, or at least the history of the city of London. And uh, I was working for a long uh, time, actually this is a fragment, uh, in a recovery of uh, one of the buildings that uh, made part of this uh, old London Bridge. The, the old London Bridge was very, uh, the type of bridge like uh, the uh, Ponte Vecchio mm -hmm. in, uh, in, no, in, no, Florence. in Florence. I'm sorry, Ponte Vecchio is in Ponte Vecchio Florence. Ponte in Florence. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Venice is always an obsession for the us. Yeah, the Rialto, the Rialto bridge. Oh, yeah, yeah, could be, but this this is seven floors mm -hmm. uh, building, so uh, and it, it was called the Nonsuch House because what? it was the first house. Oh, uh, the Nonsuch House. The Nonsuch non House. Nonsuch House. Yes. Nonsuch House. The first because house. It didn't exist. Non -such. It didn't exist. Yes. The technology. Uh, it was the first house prefabricated in Holland. In Holland. Yeah. And that was an inscription. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. We're, I in, thought we were in London. In Holland. The house was prefabricated in Holland, and brought moved to London. to London, and assembled in London. And when, what year was this? Uh, uh, I am not in that uh, project uh, so, so, but it was like uh, in 100, uh, 1500. Yeah, that's what I thought. 15, the idea that it's prefabricated in London, in, in Holland in the 16th century, to be put up in London is a technological feat in itself. That's why it was a non such. Mm -hmm. Probably it was later. Eh? I mean, probably we will have to cut this fragment of the video because it shows how uh, full my, my brain is. Uh, uh <laughs> but, um, okay. Uh, well, that is a problem. I mean, I go very deep in a project and one point now, obviously the one in London is doing his way, but uh, I'm not on... It's not on the, the center day. of your thinking. It's yeah. not the center. And I am, yes, the one in Paris is um, much more the center of my thinking. What is the project there? Uh, I am fascinated by uh, the uh, uh, Palais de Tuileries, which is a palace, a palace that used to be occupating Okay. The fourth, occupying, uh, the occup occupying yeah. the fourth side of, of the, the square of the, of the Louvre. Uh, okay. Yeah. So it, it was a, a closing the, this uh, courtyard, mm -hmm. let's say. Mm -hmm. Now it, it, it's it's not anymore there, and it was. Well, it has to, you have still the two palaces. You have the um, the oh gosh, there are two that I think are still there. No, in the in the, in the Louvre. Are you talking no, about you're talking about the Grand Palais, the Petit Palais. No, okay. no, no, talking about the Park of the Tuileries. And there's one that's now the Museum of Photography, um, which is called, I can't remember now. But yeah, the Jeu de Pomme. Uh, yeah, the Jeu de, the Jeu de Pomme. Voilà. And, yeah, the Jeu de Pomme and the other. Is that part of what you're thinking? That's part, but that is like in the limit with the Concorde the Square. We're talking about the limit on the other side, which is with uh, immediately touching the two edges of the building of the Louvre, which uh, uh, and there used to be a palace that was burned by the Commune at the uh, 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 in the 19th century. This movement, the Commune, revolutionary yeah. and so, on. Yeah. and uh, they destroyed a big portion, and some of the sculptures also in the garden were moved to a Louvre. Mm -hmm. So I am recovering 
not only some fragments of the building itself, but also some some um, uh, baroque uh, sculptures and some uh, vases. Some. But they're still there. The vases, I think, are still in. The some of them are there. Yeah. Some of them uh, are not. Mm -hmm. uh, the ones that are there are just a little portion, and are a uh, fake because the. The, the, the good ones are now in the loop. Are you studying original uh, uh, engravings or what are you looking at to reconstruct? I them? am looking, uh, pro I, I am, uh, the, the uh, uh, genuine ones are in the loop. Mm -hmm. So you can even touch them. Yeah, but how can you, are you looking at plans of these? I'm looking sites? at plans, yeah. there are some pictures too, mm -hmm. because it's like, uh, it's more basic than I thought. I mean, uh, normally the kings in, 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 in France, they just took the furniture mm. to the places where they were having uh, their lives. So uh, some of the furniture moved from uh, Versailles to Marly, which is another palace, uh, and, and, uh, and some of the pieces of uh, the Tuileries moved to Marly too, mm -hmm. and then from Marly to uh, Louvre. So, uh, how did you get interested in this project in Paris? Because it's a big absence that no one could guess mm -hmm. unless you know history. Once more. So, how did you put? You were just looking through a book. I mean, how did no, you I, 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 I walk a lot. Then I complete my guesses or my mind, the things that I wonder that could happen in internet, internet is an unbelievable source mm -hmm. and actually my work is very tough here and, uh, in Berlin in the workshop so I spend the afternoons in bed <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah absolutely I, mean, I, 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 I go direct from this uh, uh, activity to bed, I, I don't want anything in, uh, uh, in the middle, I, I don't want to sit anywhere or anything. <laughs> I want to go to bed, to have my internet, to answer my emails, to uh, mm -hmm. to do some research. Uh, and uh, I mean, I hate to to um, to lose uh, time uh, unless I have some uh, social activity or some uh, openings or something like that. My day by day is from the workshop to bed from the bed to the wash. You're a real artist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they do. What else do they do? What are they supposed to do?